Yesterday, we talked about the Pythagorean Theorem. We talked about the Pythagorean Theorem yesterday. Um, that was yesterday. We talked about the Pythagorean Theorem. And we talked about the actual definition of it. Okay? I, didn't, I, I, I generally do not say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I do not think that's a very good representation of what the Pythagorean Theorem really is. I think it really goes back to the original definition. Is that Pythagoras said, he obviously didn't say it in English, but this is what it's translated as, that the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. I think that's, that's really accurate. Um, it also works when you start doing the converse of it, saying that if you do know that the, that, that the two legs squared, the sum of those two equals the hypotenuse, then it does show you that you do have a right triangle as well. Um, what we're going to look at today is a lot about what we just kind of did for that last problem, okay? Uh, in the last problem, we basically were given uh, one side length, one leg, and we were given one hypotenuse, and we had to basically find the other length, okay? So we're going to look at kind of doing that today. Today we're mainly solving for the, uh, instead of the hypotenuse, we're main, mainly be solving for one of the other legs. So that's mainly what we're looking at today, um, not the only thing um, as we are working today. So the very first problem is a story problem, which I think sh you should feel comfortable with. Um, Silas, could you read this out loud for us all? A big six foot ladder rests against the side of a house. Um, the base of the ladder is four feet away. Approximately how high above the ground is the top of the ladder? Draw a picture of the situation and show all work in the situation. Okay, so it looks something like this. We have some house. We have some ladder that's leaning up against it. Uh, how long is the ladder itself? 16 feet. 16. So that means this, if this is the ladder, this is 16 feet right here. It's not 16 feet tall, but it's leaning up against the house. It's probably not leaning this dramatically, but we're pretending it is. Um, so if the base of the ladder is four feet away, I would imagine it means four feet away from the house. So that would look like this. And we're basically looking at this. Um, most houses that I know are going to be perpendicular to the ground. Uh, or they should be at some point um, in relation to the ground. Um, so we are dealing with a right triangle, less assured. And what we're trying to figure out is we're trying to figure out the height. So basically how high does this ladder go? So I'm going to label it as an H uh, because I think it is a height. And so when we talk about this as a leg squared plus leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared, we're just going to put in values here. What is the length of one of the legs? So we'll say 4 squared. What's the length of one of the other legs? Is, is my H that I put on there. And then the hypotenuse? 16 squared. Okay. What's 4 squared, everybody? 16. So 16 plus 8 squared equals 16 squared. 256. Yeah, this is coming up on a quiz here pretty soon. How do I solve for H squared now? Yeah, we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. We're basically trying to isolate the variable itself. So we're going to have h squared equal to now 240. How do we get h as opposed to h squared now? Okay, so we do a square root here, we do a square root here. And h will equal, since the square root of 240, what's round to the nearest? 15.5. What would my nearest be? 80 feet. Okay. And one thing that I would want to check with this is if this is like this to make sure this makes sense. Okay? If this is 4 feet, this is 16 feet, this is 15.5 feet. One thing I always have to remember is the hypotenuse always has to be the longest number. It has to be the longest side. So if I'm, if this was like 16, and all of a sudden I got an answer of like 18 or 25 or something like that, I know that I did something wrong because all of a sudden my hypotenuse is no longer my longest one. I think it's really useful to draw a picture if a picture is not given to you. I also think it's really important to make sure to go back through and check. It only takes probably about a second to realize, is this number going to be smaller than this number over here? Okay, is that all right with everybody? Awesome. Okay. Um, moving on, we have these six problems right here. Uh, I'm going to quickly draw a picture because it does say draw a picture for each situation. Uh, then find the third side of the right triangle. L means leg, H means hypotenuse. So all your work, round your answer to the nearest set square applicable. Time to get in. I'm going to draw a picture. All my pictures are basically going to look about the same. As long as you win. Um, we'll say this is H. So this is 16. Uh, do you know that meters? And I'll make sure to write it as meters for my final answer. 
Um, so again, what I would do is I'd have L squared plus L squared equals H squared. Which is H squared plus L squared equals 16 squared. That's 54 plus L squared is 256. I'll subtract 64 from both sides. And that'll give me 196. 14. What's that? Um, and then I'll square root both sides. It'll be a little bit less than 14, probably. It's 13. So 13.9 or 8. 13.9. And then my final answer would be meters. Okay. So this is the amount of work that I would expect you guys to show for each problem. Is that you are drawing, drawing a picture that says, um, and you are writing this out that you are doing your work on this. Um, it's not too long. It honestly took me, I don't know, maybe 35 seconds to do this problem. Um, maybe you can try to get away with it as well. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Draw a picture over here. Again, my pictures are always going to look the same, like so. Um, this is 9, this is 12. I will write yard in my final answer. I know L squared plus L squared equals H squared. Um, I draw mine with cursive, sort of, so if you want to write on a printy, like L just looks like a 1. I don't want to be confused. Um, this would be 9 squared plus L squared is equal to 12 squared. What's 9 squared? Maybe 1 plus L squared equals 144. If I subtract 81 from both sides, what is L squared equal? 63. And the square root of 63 is probably just a little bit less than 8, so probably say again 7.9. That's probably where I'm at. Is that right? 7.9. Then my units would be yards. Okay, and I look over here. Yeah, 7.9 would make sense in that case. It's less than 12. Okay, so what I'm going to draw my triangle. I'm not trying to go too fast, but I'm not really trying to make this any harder than it is. There's a decimal here. Um, it's a right triangle, I guess. L squared plus L squared equals H squared. That'd be 3.5 squared plus L squared equals 9 squared. I don't know what 3.5 squared is, but it's probably going to end in a 0.25. Oh, yeah. That's what it's going to be. That's right up the equation. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, it's not showing all your work. So what's 81 minus 12.25? 68. Wait, was it? 67 or 68? 68.75. Okay. And I'll take the square root of both sides. It's probably going to be, let's see, would be more than 8, less than 9. 8.3 is where we're at. 8.3, and my units would be feet. That's where it would be in front of Is this making sense what I'm doing? So just one subtraction step instead of an addition step that we had yesterday is basically a subtraction step in here. Um, so this is a huge deal for you. I think you guys were all successful in algebra as well. Um, next, draw this triangle. This is the 9, this is the 10. Uh, that's L squared plus L squared equals H squared. That's my equation. So it'll be 9 squared plus L squared equals 10 squared. 9 squared is 81, which is 100. If I subtract 81 from 100, I would have, uh, let's see, that's 19. So that's probably a little more than 4, but less than 5. So like 4.4. 4. 4. what? 4.4? 4. 4.4, 4. 4. 4. 4. and my units would be miles. 4.4 4. 4. 4. miles. How am I approximating these in my head? But yeah, I'm kind of, I, you are right on the nearest tenth here, but what I'm doing is I'm looking at 19, and I'm saying, I'm looking at the perfect squares. 19 is between 16, which is a perfect square, and 25, which is a perfect square. And I realize 19 is a little bit closer to the 16, so that's why I'm saying it's 4.4. If this was 16, it'd be 4. If this was 25, it'd be 5. It's about halfway between there, so like 4.4. That's how I'm getting to approximate these, so that I kind of... When you guys say your answers, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's about what I'm saying. Okay, what's that?
Lifelong is that photo. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one here, we have a lifelong, well, that's not a very good picture. Uh, this is 29, this is 21. <coughs> Again, here's my equation. I am abbreviating the equation nicely, so 21 squared plus L squared is 29 squared. I honestly do not know, well, 21 is, is that 441? Yeah. Okay, so I know that one. 441 plus L squared is what? 29 squared. 841. 841. Okay, when I subtract 441 from both sides, I got L squared equals, oh, that'll be nice, 400. So L just equals 20, right? And then 20 inches is what how long it turns out to be. Is this okay? Can we do the last one or should we skip it? I think we're gonna do it. Okay. We'll just skip number seven. Then we'll just roll pencils and just try to skip the number seven. How many days are we in the week? We'll just skip right over on Tuesday. Every day. We'll be able to enjoy the day. I think Tuesday is the new Monday. I don't work out at all. Mm -hmm. Did anybody start hitting baby pencil? L squared plus L squared equals H squared. This would be 13 squared plus L squared equals 17 squared. Hey, what's 13 squared? 169. Some good practice for you. Do you guys realize why I'm having you guys memorize these? It makes these problems a lot easier. What's 17 squared? 289. If I take 289 and subtract 169 from it, what do I have? 120. 120 is between, let's see, it's, it's, it's just a little bit less than 121, so I probably say what, 10.9? Yeah. 10.9 centimeters. It rounds it up. It does, it round up to 11 centimeters? Yeah. Okay, then it's 11 centimeters. If we round it, then it rounds up to 11 centimeters, and this is fine. 11 centimeters. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. What's different about the next part? What's different about that? Are they scalene triangles? What type of triangles are these? They're isosceles triangles. <laughs> For one thing, it does say that it's isosceles triangle up there. And it wants us to find the area. It's kind of big too. Find the area of each isosceles triangle. Show all work and round your answer to the nearest tenth. How do you find the area of a triangle? That's not exactly that good. It's one half. It's, uh, I'm going to call it your base times its height. We're going to see this a little bit later on. One half base times height. The base down here is obviously 16 from this first one. What's the height, though? I don't know. Can we figure that out, then? Yes. Yes. What the isosceles triangle, one property that we really haven't talked about is you can actually divide this in half. So the base is 16. These two triangles make up eight and eight, okay? So in order to find the height, you basically focus on maybe between one half of this triangle. You look at this triangle over here and say, is a right triangle of eight and 17. So in order to find the height, you just right squared plus right squared equals the hypotenuse squared. What's one of the legs of the smaller triangle? Eight. Eight, so I'd have eight squared. So that's I'm basically focusing on just maybe this right triangle over here. So one on the right. My other leg is basically this height of this. So my hypotenuse would be 17 squared. Okay. 8 squared is 64. My height, I'm just going to leave that from there. 17 squared is what? 289. Okay. I subtract 64 from 289. Now, how do I find my area of my entire triangle? Well, that's kind of one part of it. Area equals one half base times height. What's my base? Eight, so it's one half of eight. What's my height? Fifteen. Uh, half of eight is four. Four times fifteen is sixty. So my area equals sixty. 
dimensions. So what do I do with my units? Is area one dimension or two dimensional? Hey, well, hey is area one dimension or two dimensional? Two. Okay. Area is two dimensional. You're multiplying a base times a height. You're multiplying a length times a length, so it's going to turn out to be some sort of length squared. <coughs> In this case, it should be meters squared. So our answer should be 60 square meters is how you pronounce it out loud. 60 square meters. Yes, sir? Okay, number nine. Sam, find us a help with number nine. So these are 16. Square root of the side. Square root of one forty four. Well, sounds good to me. Okay, that's the base times the height. What's our base of our entire triangle? And our height of our triangle? And our height would just start out with 12, oh, right? Okay. Well, half of 32 is 16. 16 times 12 is a pretty big number. 190 what? 192, I'd say. And what would our units be on the end of this? Uh, is it one dimensional or two dimensional? If it's two dimensional, you need to have it square. The way you pronounce this is 192 square feet. Yes, ma'am. Because the entire base of the entire triangle is this. Because we're trying to figure out this height, we're basically using the Pythagorean theorem for this small triangle. Where? Oh, this should be 16. Right? That should be 16 for sure. That should be 120. Yeah, you should use the entire part of it. We better do a third one just to make sure we know what's going on here. Why don't you guys try number 10 on your own if you haven't already? Try number 10 on your own. You could use the back side of the paper if you need more room. <laughs> You try it on your own, I'll try it on my own. We'll see what happens in the very end. Hey, you guys try number 10 on your own.
Put water on the day. Put that divided by two. Forty eight. So twenty four will not work. You divide by you divide both of those by two. So like half of twelve is six, like half of four is or half of eight is four. So you just divide it once, you divide it twice. So what I do is I just say twelve times eight is so ninety six and I divide by two. That's what the one half means. Yeah. It just means times one divided by two. <laughs> Alright, how many people got 48? How many people had square centimeters? Okay, sounds good. I hope more of you had that. What I want you guys to do right now is clear your desk completely of everything but a pencil. Everything off your desk except for a pencil.